Blue, when you read Weary's book and uh, he, he almost relates in a matter-of-fact way some of the, the terrible things that happened to him, almost as if it didn't particularly sort of matter, these things sort of just happened, he just went on with life. But, I mean, he was very badly treated on behalf of his man, wasn't he? Very badly, yeah. Can you just think of just a couple of instances, things that, that he did that he did to protect his men and he got punished for? Well, the first uh, incident I remember was in the jail, in, in the civilian jail in Bandung in uh, Western Java. And we into a little jail there, you have a very little room. And the uh, officer in charge decided to get us all out on parade to count and uh, tell Weary that uh, now that we're prisoners of war, we had to do what we were told and he was number one. And then there's a misunderstanding through the interpreter, probably likes to break off. And uh, of course, he went to break off and the nip did his uh, old proverbial nana and uh, woof, the next thing he pulled out his sword and let go out where his neck. And the big black just rode it and, uh, and then it was on. And uh, eventually, he told him, you know, that uh, uh, what he thought of him, and uh, the little black didn't understand, of course. But uh, and after a while, he uh, brought you. Oh, by the way, I should tell you that uh, the crowd just went forward like that. Keep back. Otherwise, it could have been a, something much worse than what it turned out to be. But uh, and that was the first episode. And then, uh, of course, later on when we moved over to uh, Changi, we weren't in Changi very long. We would quick smart, put on the uh, railway. Is that noise? It just, it just keeps going on and on. Did they say they were going to keep it? Is it a worry? I mean, I just, I can hear it. I mean, I don't know yeah. how much, how bad it is. Well, it's there. Yeah. I know yeah. it's there, but is it, is it in the way? Blue. We'll just pick up with a couple of things that may. Yeah. Let's just take it on a little bit, Blue, to this area here when the the cuttings were going through oh, yeah. Hintock, and he was he w stood up to the Japanese so oh, many yeah. times for his men. I mean, yeah. tell us what well, sort of a man yeah, was he? Um, well, he, the, when, especially when the speedo started, a speedo, speedo, they wanted all the men they could get, and they they didn't want to listen to people being taxed and biaki, which was sick. And, uh, they just wanted. To, to get the quota out on the line, so uh, the engineers were pleased and uh, they wouldn't get knocked around. And uh, the Koreans, of course, our guards, uh, they were the lowest in the Nipponese army and uh, they used to knock hell out of our blacks. And uh, Okada, who was a corporal, medical corporal, when we uh, first went there and then he was promoted to sergeant, he used to swagger around with a little bamboo sword and uh, he wanted the men out at work. And when we were, he told him straight that uh, they couldn't go to work. And he used to pick the blacks up and carry them back into the tents and, uh, and there was bugger eyes and what have you. And uh, you know, another, that chap called the lizard, uh, he was on a par with Carter. And uh, they were threatening him all the time. The poor devil, he, he was pretty crook. He had these uh, ulcers on his leg and uh, he had a mild dose of cholera himself. And uh, yes. There were also times when he was badly beaten, wasn't he, oh, standing yes, up for yes, his men? You must remember this, that I wasn't with Weary all the time because that, I was out on the railway and then when I was isolated down the cholera and I used to get the message that Weary had been in strife and the nips had done him over. Later on, when we went up to Kinsaya, which he uh, talks about in his book, when he was bathing, the, the Nip uh, guard was bathing, and we walked by without saluting, bowing to him, as we used to with our headgear. And uh, he really, he really went after Weary. He into him, Weary finished up taking this stick and breaking it in front of him. He went berserker. And if it hadn't have been, I don't, I think, if we hadn't have been moved from Kinsaya, what he said in his book, that they actually, the powers that were then, did it 
to uh, stop any damage coming away, you know, uh, like by sending us away. And otherwise, uh, I think that black might have eventually got him. But Another thing happened too, I believe, had to do with uh, an operation performed on you. Quite a funny story. Tell us that one. Oh, jeez. Oh, That's been bandied around so much. But it's true, isn't it? Oh, it is true. So tell us the story from well, the start. Okay. Oh, jeez. Do I have to? My wife will kill me. <laughs> but, uh, oh, yes. Uh, in the last camp we were in, the Compaton, he appeared on the scene and told me that it uh, looked like, you know, we'd have to separate. And, uh, he said, uh, he said, more or less, he couldn't cook the books anymore, that uh, I'd have to go. And I had this sudden thought, uh, what about an operation on day of movement? Yeah? And he said, uh, what have you got? I said, I got my tonsils, I don't need them. I got my arthritis, my uh, appendix, I don't need it. I said, I got my foreskin, I don't need that. He said, right, foreskin. And that was it. But uh, really, now I, now that we're back here, I wish I could find it again because on those cold mornings I need it. <laughs> yeah. But uh, oh yes. Uh, but I might uh, add that the uh, movement was uh, cancelled, so uh, came off for naught. <laughs> uh, oh yeah. And good job too. He. Everyone talks about this man almost in larger than life terms. I mean. How would you pay tribute to Weary Dunlop? If you were to, uh, to be asked, what sort of a man was he? How would you respond? He's the greatest man that uh, ever put on a pair so of boots. Just, again. He's the greatest man that ever put on a pair of boots, as far as I'm concerned. He's, uh, there's no one better in my book. How do you think Australia should remember Weary Dunlop? Well, my kids will remember him. And, uh, other people's children. So how do you think that Australia as a, as a nation should look back on this man and, and how should they see him? Well, as, as I just said, uh, he's the greatest man in my book and uh, he should be uh, definitely, uh, you can't say a saint, but uh, you know, I can't get the right word, but uh, I think he's the best. Have you ever met just a second. Just stop for a moment. In terms of men you've met in your life, Lou, where do you rate Weary Dunlop? Top. Number one. No one better. No one better. No, he's number one. That seems to be the feeling of almost every single man you talk to. Anyone who had anything to do with this man yeah. looks upon him that way. As I say, where he doesn't see kudos, there are a few chaps that get the idea that uh, he might, you know, because of all this publicity, but uh, he didn't do it. Uh, the, the fellows that uh, went through it and realised that uh, they came back, and most of them wouldn't have come back. Well, I shouldn't say most of them, but a hell of a lot wouldn't have come back if it hadn't been for him. But his leadership and uh, also his uh, medical uh, record, you know, his operator, his uh, surgical now. Uh, because we're talking about operations in the most oh. unbelievable primitive conditions. I mean, how did he cope? Oh. Blow flies around, blacks often pieces of atop and what have you to shush him away and uh, down on his haunches in the tents, down the cholera tent uh, because he's so tall and the uh, tents were so low, you know, the fear that we had down there for the, and, uh, and his feet with the festerings on them and uh, uh, and not only that, he, he was he's working 20, I always said he worked 25 hours a day. Yeah. Oh, yes, he's on the go all the time. And of you know, course, some great men with us too, of course. We had uh, dear old uh, Major Moon, Arthur Moon, and uh, Ewan Corlett, who were very good friends, and they thought the world of Weary. Great team. Of course, at the end of his book, he says he makes this commitment to look after his men after the war. I mean, yeah. that's, that's the, 
the mark of a, of a truly remarkable that's man. What he's that's what he, he's endeavoured to do ever since the war was out. And uh, he succeeded in a lot of it, in most of it. Yeah. Yes, if it wasn't for where there'd be a lot that uh, aren't getting the due respects that they should have had. Yeah. Okay, Blue. Thank you. Thanks for that.